Amen. Now let's pray. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for the, to show him the buildings of the temple. Now remember, not all the buildings of the temple was was of the Lord. Uh, Herod, when he came in, he built all kinds of additions to the temple, all kinds of other buildings. And uh, anyways, he was not a godly man, and thus and thus and so forth. And people bragged on, you know, what Herod had done and, and all these great buildings and so forth. And disciples were saying, showing him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said, and how do you know if, if man builds something, it's not going to stand? Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesus said unto them, the disciples, you see you not all these things verily. Truly I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now he's not just talking about the, the other temples that Herod had raised up, but he's also talking about uh, the temple of God, the, the, the sanctuary of the Lord. And, and as he said, verse 3, and as he said upon the mount of all his disciples came to him privately, saying, here's that three-part question, so I'd like for you to take note on this. The three-part question, and it would be the same today because people would say the same thing today. Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming? And the end of the world. So there's a three-part question. Tell us when. So they, they're basically saying, well, when are this? When's the temple going to be torn down? And, and with all these other buildings, so when's this going to happen? They, they don't just stop there. Tell us when these things shall happen. And what should be the sign of thy coming? And that's the rapture. And everybody knows that the coming of the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night. And then they don't stop there. And of the end of the world, it really means the age. God's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. The form is going to pass away. And verse 4 is so important. Uh, I want everybody really to pay attention to verse 4. Because verse 4, uh, of all the things that Jesus could say, the first thing that comes out of his mouth, he says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Take heed that no man do what? Deceive. Come on, so, talk to me again. Deceive you. Take no man, let no man deceive you. Like I told you Saturday, yesterday, mm -hmm. I was at the flea market. This woman, she said she's a Hoover witness. And I told her, it's a false straight out, and thus and thus. She said, well, I'm happy where I'm at. I said, well, that does not mean you're right just because you're happy. But you've got to study the Word of God for yourself, and thus and thus. And I gave her all the scriptures. I said, with Jehovah Witness for years and so forth. And it's a cult. And uh, so when I talked to the Muslims there yesterday, likewise too, I told them to prove that your uh, Allah and your Muhammad is real. They cannot prove it. But the Word of God we can prove because we have historical facts, and we have not only historical facts, we have evidence that this thing has happened, and and uh, the Bible's over 3,000 things that the Lord said would happen, and they've all happened right down to the T, exactly, not close to, but exactly like He said. And uh, the first thing He says, take heed to man deceive you. Verse 5 says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And I said, You you call yourself Jehovah's Witness. So you call yourself by his name, and you say that, you know, 200 years ago, Jehovah's Witness started, so forth. Now you're God's people, and then they teach, you know, only 144,000 can go to heaven, which is their elders, and so forth, and the rest is the state of earth. It's not scriptural. Somebody say it's not scriptural. It's not and, scriptural. Uh, so, anyways, uh, Let's back up to where Jesus said in verse 2, there shall not be left here one sin upon another. And that happened 66 A.D. when Titus came into to Israel. And, and there's a rumor when I, that there's gold laid between all those stones. And I've been there quite a few times and so forth. So they tore that temple down looking for that gold that was laid in between the stones and they found none. But how many of you know the Lord said it's going to come down and, and it doesn't matter how it comes down, whether he used the devil or not, it's going to come down. Somebody say amen. Yep. So if, if God said it, that settles it. Uh, when we doubt God's word, that's unbelief, and that's sin. And verse 6 says, and he says, And you shall hear of wars and rivers of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So clean back from those days, even clean up today, that's all we hear about wars and rivers of wars. But he said, don't, don't get excited. He said, all these must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So, so then he says, verse 7, For nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Now that's a that's a whole great big series of teachings right there. So we, we find that uh, right now we're coming into the United Kingdom, the United Nations and so forth. 
And any nation that does not belong to the United States, as we come in these last days, which we're going to get into Ezekiel and this and that, and, and uh, what's going on, the, the NATO and, and all these other things, we're going to do an in-depth study on that, and we're even going to go through Ezekiel and let you know which nations are coming against Israel and, and thus and thus and so forth. And he says, for nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against nation. So if you're not in the United Nations and you're one that's out, you're, they're going to come against you and so forth and thus and thus will force you to become part of them. And he says, and there shall be famine, and we've always had that, and, and parts of the world is always starving right now, but I want you to understand that this world has never seen famine like until it's going to be when the book of Revelations begins. Please listen. The book of Revelation has not begun. We're not in the book of Revelation. It begins when the Antichrist appears. Uh, the Bible lets us know in 1 Thessalonians chapter, verse 2 and so forth, uh, that when the Antichrist appears and to be a falling away, then the return of the Lord Jesus Christ comes. We'll get into that more in depth, but I'm trying to go down through here. We'll, we'll get into this in, in, into one of my other studies. So we're not in the book of Revelations. It's not been fulfilled, and uh, all the other junk. But the Bible does say these things here. He says, uh, for nations shall rise against nations, verse 7, and kingdom against kingdom, there shall be famine and pestilence. Pestilence is certain types of diseases and insects and this and that. And earthquakes in diverse places. When I first got saved, I heard about earthquakes in diverse places. And I thought, well, that means in the ocean. It does not just mean in the ocean, although they are in the ocean. It's going to happen every place, all over different places. So back in my days, you, you did not hear of very many earthquakes any place except certain parts of the world. But now we're in, uh, close to York, Pennsylvania, and we, we're having earthquakes around here. All kinds of places all around this world is having earthquakes in diverse places, and they're going to get worse and worse. And we know that California, according even to scientists, that California one day, the, the earthquake so great that the tip, California hangs out over the ocean. It's hard to believe that all that water is cut back underneath it. That one day, this earthquake is going to cause California to bust off into the ocean. And there's going to be a tsunami. Water come all the way. And the scientist says it will come as far north even as Pennsylvania. Now, can you imagine something like that? And, but I honestly believe in my heart and soul that... Uh, uh, we're in for more earthquakes and more tornadoes and worse weather than we've ever seen, including what's coming very soon. Uh, we'll get into that prophecy later on. And uh, verse 8 says, these are the beginning of sorrows. So all these things you see is just the beginning. How many of you know the beginning is not going to be as bad as the ending? So when we get into the book of Revelation, we find that two-thirds of all mankind is destroyed. All the water becomes clotted in blood, and all the stars fall from heaven, and all these different horrible things, and all the plagues and vows and woes, and, and uh, all these different things happens, that th this is a worldwide destruction, and, and Jesus is going to be even bringing that up here as we get on over here in, into the scriptures about those last days. So we're going to find out where we are according to the Word of God, not according to what man teaches, but according to what the Word of God says. And uh, verse 8 says, these, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Now listen, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Really, this is really talking about the Jewish people, and, and we know what happened to them, but it's also talking about Christians. The time is coming, and which, which is already here, that we're hated by the world. We're hated by, by the nations and so forth. Uh, when I was a child, we had... Prayer in school, Bible study, pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag, and under God, and thus and thus and forth. But now it is a, a law that you're not allowed to say anything about Jesus. Now you can say whatever about Muhammad or, or uh, New Age or anything. But isn't it strange that Jesus is the only one you're fearful of? Mm -hmm. And I told these people, and I grabbed them by the hand and said, You know, if Jesus is nothing, just let me take you by the hand and pray for you so you're not touching my hand. I said, You know why? Because you're scared of the name of Jesus, so they say amen. amen. So, uh, anyways, we're going to go for questions here in a couple of minutes. And he says, And they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and you shall be killed, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And how many of you know Israel is hated of all nations? 
And that's why we see all this news going on and so forth. And this great gathering is starting to happen, which Ezekiel talks about all these different nations and Russia and China and, and Iraqi nations and all this and that. And, and uh, it's coming. That's what we'll, we'll get down to detail as we get into that. So you'll have to follow along on these teachings here. And uh, I know some of you are going to get upset, but we're going to stick with the Word of God, not what you heard taught. But uh, you you got to read it yourself. And he said, that, that the nation that will be up and be afflicted, you shall be killed, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And th this is going to really cause a great falling away. Uh, the Bible lets us know that there will be a falling away first before the Antichrist be revealed, before Jesus comes, and then the Antichrist shall be revealed. But when a persecution is coming to the so-called church, we're going to find out who is who. We're going to find out who's really a Christian, who's going to stand. A lot of people brag and say, Lord, like Peter did, Lord, I'll never forsake you. I'll go to prison and give my life for you. And the Lord said, no, Peter, you will not. You'll deny me three times uh, before the cock crows. Peter said, today, Lord, no, all men forsake you. I will never. And the Bible said, all the other disciples said likewise. And the Bible says they all forsook him. And they walked personally with him three and a half years. So uh, we're going to find out who's sincere and who's not sincere. So th this, this is about no time to play games. It's time to sink roots and get strong. And some of you that's watching this here, uh, you're playing games with the Lord. You're, you're not really uh, fasting and praying and seeking God and studying His Word. And you're not going to church. And you, you think you've arrived just like a man who talked to you yesterday. He said, I went to church, he said, uh, five times a week. And he said, well, I come to the conclusion, I don't have to go to church. He said, I'm okay. And I just let him know that he's hidden for hell. Some of you people out there said, oh, you kind of told him that. No. As long as he lives and justifies himself, and he's right in his own eyes, and he forsakes the things of God, he becomes lukewarm, he's backslidden, and he's going to hell. Now, you say, I don't like it. You want to turn this off? Turn it off. But, but one day you stand before God, you're going to be held accountable of it because God's going to show you you snap this thing off here. Somebody say amen. amen. And uh, he, verse 10 says, And there shall be many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Well, we know that that has always been. But it's getting worse so now uh, more than ever. We just heard uh, what was it on last night, uh, day before here, somewhere around here where a young fella uh, decapitated his father's head. Just went and cut his young dad's head off. We, was it he Hanover? Boy was from York, but he killed boy from York, but went to Hanover. But anyways, uh, hate one another, hate father, mother, and so forth. And cut their heads off and so forth. We, we, my Bible says the Word of God says evil men seduces shall wax worse and worse. So for everybody out there saying, well, you know, it's going to get better. We're going to usher in the kingdom of God and so forth. We're going to have heaven here on earth all year old. That stuff. You you don't know what you're talking about. And uh, so it's going to get horrible. And since we have that wonderful Muslim president that's working against Christianity, against the Jewish people, and he's also, even as new age, because if he was a true Muslim, where he should be, the Muslims will not put up with homosexuality. They kill them. And, that's right. and our wonderful president now, uh, all for gay rights and so forth, so he's even as new age, whatever God you want to choose, you know, so forth. But how many of you know there's one God? And uh, we'll, we'll get into that in-depth teaching later on. I'm trying to move along quickly to show you where we are. And uh, many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. I told that woman yesterday about how the Jehovah Witness prophesied so many times the day he was coming and stuff. And she says, well, we don't listen to that no more. I said, but it's still a cult. And so I tell her teaching. She said, but I'm satisfied. I'm happy where I am. How many of you know that does not mean because you're a Muslim or a Buddhist or whatever, atheist or, or homosexual, uh, somebody was just talking here this evening, uh, but how happy they are. Oh, you was talking about uh, your uh, cousin that's a lesbian. She's a uh, deacon in a church someplace. And uh, she's so happy, she's so happy that they have the gay rights and this and that, but how many of you know just because she's happy, does not mean, and even though she's a dig in church, does not mean she's going to heaven. And I can tell you what the Bible says about it. She's going to split hell wide open if she dies in that sin. And that, but you've got to remember that a lot of times people will reach a place where God will turn them over to a reprobate mind. And to do that which is convenient for them. In other words, whatever suits them. And so more than likely, God has already turned her over to a reprobate mind. And uh, 
how many of you know that you don't want to return to a reprobate mind? Somebody say amen. 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 Uh, you, you know, so we, we've got to stay serious with God, very humble with God. And if his word says it, whether we like it or not, we need to say, yes, Lord, yes. And uh, Mary said to, when Jesus turned the water into wine, whatsoever he saith to you, do it. So whatever the Bible says, whatever Jesus says, do it. So I say, amen. And uh, he said, for many false prophets to arise and deceive many. Uh, verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, they love of many shall wax cold. What is iniquity? Iniquity is sin. Things that's uh, unlawful for a person to do. Uh, so a lot of people, the one man, I've, I've talked to thousands of people and so forth, they said, well, I have to work on Sunday, you got to pay your bills, you got to make hay when, you, when the sun shines, and, and my boss said i got to do this and that, and people says, well, my pastor said that uh, you're eternally secure, you don't have to worry about it, you've accepted the Lord, you're going to heaven. My Bible says God's the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey Him. So people would believe in a lie, false teachers, false false prophets that's standing up telling people all kinds of things. And, and Jehovah's Witness, different one says, you know, there's no hell, you know, and so forth, you know, that you just die and that's it. And I say to him, I say, well, then I don't have nothing to fear. Uh, so, uh, and Sister Teresa, we welcome you uh, here. I hope you can hear everything okay. I'm trying to get this over here as close as I can so you can hear everything. And uh, may God touch you, which he is, and, and the healing power of Jesus Christ be upon you. I speak peace to you, Sister Teresa. All is well. We're for you. And if God be for you and we're for you, he could be against you. So uh, we'll have a special prayer for you. And uh, many of you out there watch this tape. It doesn't matter whenever this thing was taken or so forth. God loves you. And all you have to do is surrender to him. And when you say, Daddy, in the deepest form, he'll say, Daughter, I hear you. Son, I hear you. Daddy's got everything under control. My wife says it all the time. I don't understand a lot of things, but one thing I do understand and know, my God's got everything in control. Even though this world looks like it's out of control, my God, our God, has everything in control because he's the one that wrote this book, and he's the one that said what's going to happen in the future, and we see many things going to happen here in the future, which we're going to get into uh, in our studies as we go along. Uh, he said, and because of iniquity, the things of this world, love, the love of many shall wax cold. So there's going to be a lot of people, you know, and I've talked to them all the time. And they say, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm, I, I believe in God, I do the best I can, and so forth. I don't go to church, I don't do this, and I don't do that, I don't pay tithes and offerings, and so forth. But I'm going to heaven, and I've got news for them, they're not going to heaven. Well, you can't judge them, no, the Bible says judge righteous judgment. And the Bible says you should know a tree by its fruit. So I'm an old logger. That means I cut timber. I've cut every kind of tree there is. I don't have to see what kind of fruit's on that tree. I can tell you when I look at that tree if it has leaves. Or if it don't even have to have leaves, it might just have bark. And if it don't even have the bark, I can look at the wood and tell you what kind of tree it is and so forth. So I can judge that tree and tell you that tree is not a fruit tree or whatever. Jesus speaks very much on those that bear fruit. Those that does not bear fruit, he says, you are a profitable servant, cast him into, into uh, outer darkness with the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, that, that was somebody that was supposed to be saved. So, uh, anyways, that's another long story, and it's thus and thus and so forth. And uh, he says, verse 12, And because of iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, and oh, what a time. And, and I want to just stop and throw this in here right now. The reason God has to send judgment bring judgment upon this world is because if he don't, no flesh will be saved because of the sin that's in this world. But for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that died on that tree and rose again the third day and he serves called when his name shall be saved. But we, salvation is, is a free gift, but we're kept by obedience. James says, faith without works is dead, being alone. If a man says he believes in God, he does well. The devil also believes in trouble. But will you know, obey man at your faith in God without serving God is like a dead body without the spirit. So, so uh, we've got to do our part. And everybody say amen to that. Amen. And uh, the next verse says something about uh, all the, the Bible even says, all those that live godly shall suffer persecution. And verse 13 says, but he that endureth unto the end, these things shall be saved. Now how many of you know when he says, he that endureth, that means you're going to have to put up with a lot of stuff, go through a lot of stuff. 
And I told the people here, and I've been telling people, the Lord laid a message in my heart I've never preached before that Jesus speaks many different times. He says, take up your cross and follow me. Everybody has a different cross to follow. You'll go through different things in life that is more hurtful for you. My wife is a walking miracle of all the strokes and so forth she had, the operations, and, and thus and thus, and all Amen. the sicknesses she's had. And so, forth. and so she's had a hard cross. And her cross is not always the same as other people. Other people might have marriage problems or whatever it might be, or physical, no matter what it might be. But he says, you've got to pick up your cross and follow me. And the rich man, he, he, the Bible says he was grieved at that saying. And he went away uh, sad, grieving. Why? Because Jesus said, uh, take up your cross and follow me, but sell everything you have and give to the poor and you'll have riches in heaven. He could not do that. So Jesus wanted him to take up a cross where he would just follow him, no matter what Jesus said. And that meant he was going to have to do with that all his wealth. It's not that... Not, Send to hell wealth, and God does give wealth to, to his people, and that's another story, too. But he that endureth to the end, these things will be saved. So, in other words, he says, If you can endure unto the end, you're going to make it. How many of how many you see that in there? If you endure to the end. Yeah. And my secretary, Sister Joan, she goes through a hard life and so forth, very hard uh, family, and thus and thus and so forth. And, and uh, what was it about? Three years ago, your granddaughter, the same as your daughter, uh, how old was she? She was 15. She was 15, her and her girlfriend got on a four-wheel right after school, went down the road at a high speed, hit a fence and telephone pole, and died. And uh, Sister Jim called me, she was screaming and crying. And uh, so she went through a hard old door there, and many of us has uh, likewise. And uh, then she had a wreck herself. Uh, one night after one of the services and so forth, and had a wreck and hit a tree and was in the hospital with her leg all cut up and, and all kinds of high blood pressure and heart troubles and, and family problems, which I won't get into, and thus and thus. And so she, her cross is a whole lot different than some of us others. But either way, we've got to take off her cross. But the Bible says, He that endureth to the end, these things shall be saved. Mm -hmm. and, but the Bible does say, Our light affliction now, which is a light affection. He said it's a light affection. He said, but it's just for a moment. My wife was reading the other day that day. Yeah. He says, it's but for a moment, but it'll work a, a exceeding great reward for us. So the time's coming that we'll look back and say, that, that was nothing in compared to what heaven is for me. Mm -hmm. And my sister here tonight, she was telling me about when she was caught up into heaven, she came back on the white horse with Jesus and so forth. And even though she had seen Jesus and so forth, she said that experience was something else. And how many of you know we're looking forward to that? Amen. And my sister that's around the camera back here tonight, oh dear Jesus, uh, how did we say that here tonight? I uh, said somebody's good to have you here or something. How did you say that? I'm glad to be here. She, she didn't say, I'm glad to be here. She went, I'm, I'm glad, glad to, to be here. here. She, she, said. And she was just so excited to get away from all that junk. And how many of you know that's the way it's going to be we get to have it? Oh my God! Oh, many girls back many years ago, the old uh, opera thing, the old many girls used to come out with a little hat on, a little sales tag and so forth, and she'd go, Howdy! I'm just so glad to be here! And how many of you ever going to do a whole lot more howdy when we get to heaven? Somebody say amen. Amen. And, uh, so, oh, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, hallelujah. Mm. Sister Teresa, you getting any of this here? Are you? Huh? She has. Oh, hallelujah. I know you are, girl. She put you on mute. But uh, he that endureth to the end, these things shall be saved. Verse 14. Now, we're going to be getting close to our time here, and, and we're going to be also coming into the three and a half years. The three and a half years is the middle of the tribulation period. So you're going to really have to take notice as we start to get into this. And Jesus says, verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So this gospel, claimed back then, was not preached in, in, in uh, all the kingdoms of the world uh, for a witness unto, unto all nations, but it has been now, through television, internet, missionaries, and thus and thus and so forth, it has been preached all over the world, even places where uh, they will not allow the ministers or evangelists to come in. 
Now we have internet, we have satellite and so forth, and there's a lot of people, including Muslims, in case you don't know it, there's a lot of Muslims tuning in and they're getting saved. Thank God for that. Atheists and all kinds of Buddhists and all kinds of people are truly getting saved. And how are they getting saved? Jesus appears to them. And the word of God penetrates and cuts their heart. Verse 15 now, Jesus is going to jump to the three and a half years of the book of Revelations. Now, one more time, I want to say this very quickly. And we'll go back to Thessalonians and thus and thus and so forth. Let, let, let's turn, let's, let, let's, well here, let, let me finish verse 15 here first. Jesus says, and when ye therefore shall see, everybody say see, see. the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel and the, Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Daniel includes equal and different ones. It's talking about the Antichrist, and Daniel speaks about the, the Antichrist after the temple had been rebuilt in Jerusalem in the middle of the three and a half year period. The Antichrist will come in and sit down in the seat of the Messiah in the temple. Now everybody get that through your head. Jesus said that. When you shall, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, he's coming. Who shall read? Let him understand. Okay, so he's talking about that three and a half year period. I want you to turn with me uh, over to Revelation, or not Revelation, Matthew twenty-four, one more time. Uh, before we go uh, uh, any farther, before we turn over to Revelations here, I'm, I don't want to get so much out of here and, and thus and thus. But uh, Jesus makes a statement. Uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, jump over to verse 33. We'll, we'll back up on all this here in a couple minutes. Jesus, in verse 32, he says, Now learn a parable or example, a parallel of a fig tree. He remaining as, as Israel. When his branch is young and tender forth for the leaves, you know the summer is nigh. He's talking about, and how many of you know right now, at the time we're mentioning here is August, and right now this is summertime. But here in just a couple more weeks, we're going to see a change in those leaves. We're going to see those leaves start to fade. You're going to see the turning brown. And that's a sign of what season coming on? Fall of the year. And after a while, those leaves have to turn brown. They uh, uh, fall off that tree, and the tree is barren, and that's a sign of what season has come to pass then. Everybody say winter. Yeah. So then the Bible says, but Jesus speaks here. He says, "Like when you shall see." Back at verse three. Now learn a parable of a fig tree when his branches get tender and put forth leaves. You know the summer's not. So we just said about the leaves falling off the tree. That's winter. Now he says, but when you look at that tree and you see the leaves are yet young and tender, how many of you know it's budding? Mm -hmm. The leaves are just buds coming out. Mm -hmm. And you say, oh, look at that. That tree is budding. The flowers are budding. You, you see the budding. That tells you that spring is coming. And after spring is coming, summer's here. And after summer, fall, and so forth. So God has seasons. So he's saying, now listen to what he says here. Now learn a parable of a fig tree when his branches yet tender and puts forth leaves. You know that summer is not. Verse 33. 30, 30, so, like ye, like, so likewise ye when you shall see all these things. Everybody say all these things. All these things. Know that it's near even at the door. Now verse 34. Please mark it. Mark it in your Bible. Yep. And when you mark that, I want you to write right beside it. That means me. That's it. Because it says these words, Verily, true, I say to you, this generation, or you can say that generation, shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. So he's saying that the generation that sees Israel come back as a nation shall not pass away, die out, until all things be fulfilled. And all those things are going to be fulfilled is the rest of the Word of God, and Ezekiel, and Daniel, and the Antichrist, and Jesus coming back, and, and the judgment, and all these things. He says, that generation shall not pass. Now, how many of you know, 1948, Israel became a nation. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if I'm correct in my thinking, I think right now, this is 2014, I think that's 65 years. Am I right? Somebody, the math teacher, yeah. is that right? 65 years? But the Bible lets us know that our life is supposed to be uh, three score and ten, which is, uh, 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 what is it, 70 years. 
I think I'm right on that. Yep. But how many of you know that we're not going to be all dead until all things be fulfilled? Mm -hmm. We're going to see the Antichrist come. He's going to be revealed. Now, this, yeah, I want you to turn with me to Revelations here right now. And let, let you see uh, when John put on the Isle of Pass, at the opening of Revelations, uh, hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Most preachers won't preach it because he says it scares my people when they won't come back. Well, you know what? You're going to end up going to hell if you don't preach the whole word of God. Uh, chapter 1, verse 1, I, I want to lay this out here first. The revelation or the revealing or the open, open, openly display of Jesus Christ. In other words, this book is going to reveal Jesus. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. So God gave him this revelation. Uh, so you people say Jesus the Father, Jesus the Son, Jesus the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on, you're so messed up. Which God gave to him to show to his servants, that means us, which things must shortly come to pass. And he sent it and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So here's the way that plays out. God gave it to Jesus. Jesus gave it to an angel. The angel gave it unto John, and John gave it unto us. Do you see that? Yes. So it's a five-step process. And the verse 2 says, He read record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and all the things which he saw, not anything he heard. But I want you to turn over uh, to, uh, let me get it right here. Chapter 6. And uh, we'll, we'll do a study all the way up to the opening of the seven seals and this and that. And the Bible says, uh, in chapter 6, verse 1, And I saw when the Lamb had opened one of the, one of the seals, I heard there was a noise of thunder. One of the beasts saying, Come and see. The beast is, is, is this cherubim of the Lord. And he, he says, And I saw, and behold, a, and I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow. Now, this white horse, automatically people say, Well, Jesus come back on a white horse. But how many know that the end of Christ, as Christ, looking like Christ, pretending he's Christ, is going to pretend and come back, uh, reveal himself as, as Christ? He, John says, I saw, behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. How many know that's not Jesus? Jesus has a sword. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, Amen. Amen. That bow is for war. And he said, had a crown was given him, and he went forth uh, conquer and to conquer. And when he opened the second, and when he opened the second seal, I heard the, the second beast say, "Come and see." And there was another horse, and that horse was red, and power was given to him that set set thereon to take peace from the earth. So here's the Antichrist right off the bat. As soon as he comes in, all nations are going to give him power and glory. This is why we've got the new world order, one world order, so forth, NATO, and so forth. And all the nations are going to give their authority, their power to him because he's going to be as Christ. And he says, and and to him, and, and thereon to take peace from the earth. How many of you know Jesus comes back? He's going to bring peace to the earth. And there's given him a great sword. And he opened the, the third seal. I heard the third be say, come and see. And lo, behold, a, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. That is famine, starvation. And uh, verse 6, and I heard the voice of in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. See thou that hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the, the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, that means death, gangrene, green, and his name that was on him was death and hell followed him, and power was given to him uh, over one fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger, and with death and with the beast of the earth. And when he had opened the, the fifth seal, I heard the, the, under the altar of the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony that they had. And then we come into this, uh, to the next seal. And this brings you to the middle of the three and a half years. Uh, so we'll continue to read here so I don't get anybody mixed up. 
And uh, verse 9 says, When he opened the fifth seal, I heard the, the heard under the altar of the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a, with a loud voice, saying, How long, Lord, holy and true, does thou not, not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes was given to, unto every one of them. And it was said that they said of them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants, and those, uh, the brothers, that they should be killed as they were and should be fulfilled. And verse, verse uh, 12 says, and, and I beheld it when he had opened the sixth seal, and though there was a great earthquake, the sun became black and sackcloth, and the moon, uh, uh, moon became as blood, and stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree of cast it on time of faith when she is shaken, and heaven is a part of the scroll when it is rolled uh, together, and every mountain now is moved out of the spot. And uh, this goes on and on, but this is a three and a half years, so when we go back to Revelations uh, chapter 24, uh, if you drop, drop down uh, to verse 26, it says, or 29 says, and nearly after the, the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the, the stars of heaven shall fall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And, and uh, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and all the tribes of the earth shall mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in, in clouds of power. And uh, that's what I said in verse, in verse 31. And he, said, and he shall send his angels with a great sign of a trumpet, and he shall gather together his elect from the four winds of the, uh, from one end of the heavens to the other. Now, What's that talking about? Let's talk about the rapture. But when do we find out the rapture takes place? Three and a half years. So nobody can, can argue that point. People say, we're getting out of here before all these things happen. Uh, I guess I might as well take the time and do it right now. Let's turn back to Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I know I'm getting speaking mad at you. I can... I can just see it in the spirit. Some of you people are just getting all worked up and you're calling me all kinds of names and you better be careful in that. You better just pray it. And everybody said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I think it's first second Thessalonians, I guess it is. Chapter two. Uh, and this apostle Paul speaking to the Thessalonica church, and he's gonna describe and talk to us about the Antichrist and about the rapture of the church. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And just one reason a lot of you ministers don't want me to come to your church because you get your church doctrine, your church teaching, your church uh, traditional uh, stuff back down your throat and it upsets you. Uh, Paul says, now we beseech you therefore, brothers, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you know he's talking about the gathering together the rapture? And by our gathering together unto him. How I many you know that's definitely talking about the rapture, gathering to him? The dead Christ shall rise first, we which are alive, the rain, men shall call together, and meet the Lord here, and we shall be with the Lord thus and thus. Verse 2. He said, That she should not be shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, in order somebody pretend us from, from them. As as that the day of Christ is at hand. In other words, he's saying. Some of you are saying that I you wrote to you and said, Jesus would come right now. Now this is 2,000 years ago. He said, and uh, the day is at hand. Now here we go. Now please pay attention to every word. What did Jesus say in Matthew 24? First thing he said, let no man deceive you. Now Paul's going to say the first thing Jesus said in Matthew 24. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. What day? Back up again. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, That no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Just take notice of that. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't just stop there. Then he says, and. Now, am I correct in saying and means it's connected? Mm -hmm. In other words, a cat and a dog come down the street. Horse and buggy. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, fish and fries. So that word and is very important. Every word is inspired of God. So what's he saying? That no man deceive you by any means. For that day, the rapture, shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed this sudden petition. Who is that? The Antichrist. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, he's going to describe the Antichrist. 
Verse 4 says, Who opposes himself and exalts himself above all that is called of God? For that is worship, so that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself to be God. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. That's three and a half years. Yeah. He's going to be sitting in the, the rebuilt temple. Three and a half years. Oh! Mm -hmm. Three and a half years. He said, Remember ye not that when I was with you, Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might re re and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. And it goes on to destroy and how the Lord's going to destroy him with the brightness of his coming. So Jesus, when we go back to Matthew 24, let's go back to Matthew 24. Is anybody getting anything out of this here? Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. You, you know, if, if all this uh, teaching that I'm doing here tonight gets some of you so upset that gets you in the Word of God and you say, well, I'm going to prove Brother Humphrey wrong. I'm going to prove him wrong. My pastor said, and, and our church said, and so-and-so said, and this and that, and we did not. And, I, and I'm going to prove it. You know, that's how I can see it. Because I can't have gone through tragedy. My marriage was shot, my wife and I in prison, she drove and get away car and I, you, this goes on and on and this and that and so forth. But I promised a so-called God that if he put our marriage back together, then I'd go to a good church. And the, of all the churches that I called was a good church, something in my heart just knew those Pentecostal people in those days, not today. In those days, there's something in the matter of those people and I liked what was the matter. They were nuts. And I just knew they were serious. Nowadays, they're just about as formal, including, uh, anyways. But my wife ended up getting saved. And she got filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke in tongues. And I made up my mind right then and there. I beat my finger off that preacher's nose and said, I promise the so-called God I'll be here. You back on me, buddy. He said, I'm, my brother, I said, I'm not your brother either. And I told him where old mankind come from and thus and thus. But I'm going to prove all these idiots wrong. And I got into the Bible to prove them all wrong. Mm -hmm. You think I could, when they lay hands on her and the power of God hit her and, and, and not only uh, filled with the Holy Ghost but totally healed her. You think I could believe that? I couldn't believe that. But a year later, she wouldn't fight with me anymore. All she wanted to do was talk about this Jesus. Drive me crazy. I walked out in the porch, slammed the door so hard. My mother gave us a Jesus picture, jumped off the wall, split in half. And I looked in heaven and said, Now they saw my wife! Why? Because I just asked her right before I walked in the door. I said, I believe you love this Jesus more than me. And she said, Yes, Jim, I do. Now, how many of you know that? Mm -hmm. Amen. So I got into the Word of God to study to prove all these idiots wrong. And guess what I found out? They were wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> Somebody say, Hallelujah. So if it makes some of you so mad at you, you say, I'm just going to prove that old beardy hillbilly uneducated idiot wrong. Please do. Please do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's the trouble with the church. They don't study the word for the self right they divide the word of God. Uh, where, where did I say we're going? Matthew. Matthew. Oh yeah, okay. Where's Matthew at? Is that Old Testament? Yeah, that's right. That's Old Testament. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew 24. Let's go back up. In verse 15. He said, uh, and when you shall see, see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel, the prophet standing in the holy place, who shall read, let him understand. How many of you know that is the same thing we just read over here in Revelations? That's the middle of three and a half years. That's when the seventh seal comes. And when you come into the, the, the sixth and seventh seal, that's when all the vows and the bowls and the woes and, and all the plagues and all these, that's when God really pours out his wrath. And I want to just say something to you. The first three and a half years is going to be hellish. But it's not going to be nothing compared to the last three and a half years. Right. And people are walking around saying, we're getting out of here. People are, hey, that's not happens. Well, somebody ought to straighten Apostle Paul out. Somebody ought to straighten the word of God out of Jesus because Jesus didn't say that. Somebody say amen. amen. And let's continue to read here. Let's see what Jesus says. Verse 16, uh, let them which be in them, in, 
Let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Now, where's that at? We're talking about Israel. Okay? So he's talking about the Jewish people here. He said, let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house. Well, now, let's just back up and get this here clear here. See, they, they are not going to accept Jesus Christ, but when the Antichrist does come into the temple that is being rebuilt, the Bible talks about the rebuilding of the temple. All the stones and all the utensils and the red heifer and everything is already prepared. They're ready to build it. The only thing they need is, is uh, for, for the Muslims to get out of the way and so forth. And the Antichrist is going to come in somehow and make a peace agreement. He's going to come in as Christ and make a peace agreement and Israel's going to get to build their temple. And in the middle of three and a half years, they're going to find out that the Antichrist is not Christ because they're, they're looking for a deliverer. So he's going to be the so-called savior of the world. Right now, in case most of you don't know it, uh, the Muslims, the people's running around and saying that Muhammad, Obama is the savior. Muhammad is Jesus. And how many know he's not correct enough? He's receiving glory that he should not receive. Obama, you're our president. I pray for you. I pray for you and your family. May God save your soul, man. May God save your soul. You're so deceived, man. Anyways, uh, he says, uh, Don't let any of Israel, uh, verse 17, let them which be on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house. Verse 18, neither let them which be in the field return to take any, any clothes. And woe unto them uh, that are with that are with child, and to them that give suck in his age, meaning from the breast. And pray that you your pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. So he's saying that when you see the Antichrist coming, uh, sits down, and I think he said, "Don't take no time." He said, "Get out of Jerusalem fast." He said, "Flee to Judea." And why to Judea? That's where Petra is. Yeah. And Petra is a place we was there quite a few times and so forth. And Petra is where a it's a so-called a, a carved city into the ground, uh, these big caves and different places and so forth. And they're going to flee to that place. And they're going to go in there, and they're going to so-called hide from the Antichrist. The Bible even lets us know what the what the devil's going to do. The devil's going to cause uh, the Euphrates rivers, the dams, the bus, and so forth. It's going to cause a flood to come down to try to drown them. But then God steps in, and he causes an earthquake and swallows up the water. How many of you God would protect yeah. us? Amen. Say amen. Uh, no, no matter what the devil does, God says, nah, nah. You might try, blah, 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 but it ain't going to work. Oh, glory to God. Somebody out there is watching this, you ought to just Coming jump up your feet a little bit and say, if my God be for me, you go mm -hmm. there against me. Mm -hmm. And everybody said, amen. 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 Uh, if you don't mind, I'll stick with the word of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus, you know why he was crucified? He said, you hypocrites. He said, you actors. He said, you burn in that. You swallow, and, uh, and you swallow a camel. He said, you'd rather hold true to man's tradition, make the true word of God not effect. So people really say, well, our church teaches. Well, we believe this. Well, it doesn't matter what your tradition is teaching. It's what does the word of God say? And because he come against them, they upset him. They said, he's going to be put out, get out of our way. It's better for one man to die than the whole nation. And we, we might lose our positions and so forth. And people don't want to be uh, stand up and say, I was wrong. That, that's a that's a thing called pride. That's another sin. Yep. And uh, he, verse uh, verse 21, now here we go again. Now he's going to say something. So then shall be great tribulation. <coughs> now we're going into the second half of the seven years. The last three and a half years. And he says, for then there shall be great tribulation, such as, as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. Verse 22, and except those days should be short, there should be no flesh saved. Uh, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So God is going to shorten the, the days for the elect, for his people. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Come on. Uh, I was in Jamaica numerous times, and, and they told me that Jesus Christ is living in Africa. His name is King Usulasi. And uh, uh, I said, oh. And they said, this is a thousand years from when? How many of you know that Jesus comes back? 
Rabbi Devin Ring with him a thousand years. And the lion's going to lay down the lamp. There'll be no sickness or sorrow or pain all these kind of things. The plows, plows gonna, the sword's going to How's going to sort of be in, be in the thousand years and so forth? It's peace. And I said, huh, if King Osalasi is Jesus, he sure messes things up. Because they're starving to death over there. There's war over there. Come on, talk to me here. And all these kind of things. How many of you know Jesus even talks about all these other Jim Jones and anybody and all these cults and, and uh, so forth, you know, and, and getting eyes on man and so forth. Uh, what verse was that? 21. 21. Uh, and then shall be great tribulation from as much since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall ever be, except those days shall be shortened. There shall be no flesh to be saved for the elect's sake, those days shall be saved. Uh, shortened. Then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, or believe it not. Now listen, verse 24. And there shall rise false prophets and false Christs, uh, and, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that it were possible that. They shall deceive the very elect. Now, who's he talking about here? In the middle of that three and a half years, there's going to be a false prophet come with the Antichrist. And the Bible says he's going to be called tired out of heaven. He's going to be doing going to do great signs and wonders. And people's going to say, Ah, oh, yeah, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. Yeah, who can do what he can do and so forth? And they're going to be deceived. Hmm. Huh. Uh, Kenneth Hagin, I think it was, I told this story, forgive me if it wasn't Kenneth Hagin or one of them, one of the great preachers out there, uh, said that a number of years ago, uh, he knew a man, a, a minister, <clears throat> that had lost his wife. And this minister was really devastated by losing his wife, and any man of God or anybody that loves their wife would be. And I thank God that God gave me back my beautiful little wife. Love you, Bubba Dolly. And 49 years, I love her more than ever. But when he was devastated, he told his congregation, he said, I've got to get away a while. He said, I've just got to get out of the pulpit. He said, I've just got to go and get in touch with Jesus. And he said, I've just got to go. So he went. He just started traveling the nation, started going to different churches. And he ended up going to a very large church, and he walked in this very large church. And when he walked in, uh, the curtains opened up on the platform came back, and there on the middle of the platform sat a baby grand piano, a black baby grand piano. And a man in a long black tux come walking out and sat down and started to play this baby grand piano, and he started to sing a song, one of the greatest songs there is, How Great Thou Art. He sang it in a baritone voice, I think that's a deep voice, is that not right? Yeah. And while he was playing and singing this thing, all people was raising their hands and so forth, you know, really, oh, this is something else. And then all of a sudden, a woman in a, in a uh, red low-cut evening grind walks out. Now, that already sends flags up to me. If you're a Christian, cover it up a little. I'm going to say amen. And she walks out, and she puts her elbow on the corner of the baby grind, and she starts to sing it. I forget what they call it, but another type of uh, sign. And she started to sing that same song, How Great Thou Art, with him. Mm. But right before their eyes, the man, poof, he vanished, disappeared. The baby grand piano kept on playing, and she kept on singing. People said, ah, oh, where's this happening? At a church, a Pentecostal church. And all of a sudden, poof, he goes back and continues to play. People were all just clapping and so excited and so amazed at this great sight. And all of a sudden he stops and gets up and walks to the end of the platform and he says, there's a preacher sitting right back there. He said, you lost your wife such and such a time and so forth. He said, come on to the front. He said, uh, your wife has a word. I have a word from your wife for you. And the pastor stood up and said, no. You don't have a word from my wife to me. My wife has died. She's in the presence of the Lord. How many of the devil will be persistent? Mm -hmm. He said, Sir, come forth. I have a word from your wife for you. And Russia said, You do not have a word from my, from my wife to me. Did you know the devil did it three times? You know the devil tempted Jesus three times? Mm -hmm. 
persistent. So it's, it's no great shock when the devil keeps knocking at you. But how many of you know after three times, rebuke that devil? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the man stood up and he said, you do not have a word for my wife, for me. She's in the presence of Jesus and he walked out now. People sitting there thinking this is really God moving. They do not have no understanding of the Word of God. When Saul was uh, backslidden, he went to the witch of Endor, uh, seeking to speak to Samuel, the prophet of God that had passed away. And the Bible says the witch had a familiar spirit. And she so called, called Saul up out of the grave. Saul said, why are you waking me? It wasn't Saul, but it was a spirit of hell to deceive him. If that preacher walked forth, I call my wife all kinds of sweet names and us and us. And us. For example, uh, she might have called him sugar pie, or sugar pie honey or something. But more than likely, that witch, that warlock, through a familiar spirit, would have used those words sugar pie honey or whatever it might be. I just love you and thus and thus and so forth, you know. A lot of people says they're talking to the dead. You can't talk to the dead. They're dead. Right. People say, I have communication with them at all. No, you don't. You're talking to spirits of hell. That's what you're doing. You're a nut. Somebody say, amen. You're deceived. <laughs> so a lot of people is going to be deceived here mm -hmm. by the signs and wonders that this false prophet is going to do. Deceived. He's a, even the very elect would be deceived. This is why I'm talking to so many people right there and the ones even here too. You've got to get serious with God. You've got to get in tune with Him. You've got to get intimate with Him so you can hear His voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep know my voice. My sheep will not follow another voice. But some of you out there, you're not close enough to know what the voice of the Lord is. I don't know. You can hear the devil talk to you. You say, oh, the devil said this and that. But you can't hear Jesus unless something's the matter. It must be you spend more time with the devil than you do with Jesus. Let me say amen. Mm -hmm. uh, that went over real big. Mm -hmm. Somebody out there, mm -hmm. just go ahead and give the Lord a big hand. Somebody out there say, keep on preaching, brother Humphrey. Well, pray for me. I'm still trying. Somebody say amen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to close here in a couple of minutes. Uh, <clears throat> verse 24, they, they shall arise, arise false Christ. How many of you know the Antichrist, false Christ. Jim Jones said, I'm Christ. And, and there's all kinds of different people come up and said, I'm Christ, I'm Jesus, and this and that. And people gave their lives for him, and thus and thus and so forth. Deceived, mm -hmm. blinded, deceived. I mean, really sincerely believe it. And, and we've got these cults all over the United States, all over the world today. You'd be surprised how many people uh, believe it a lie. Verse 24, there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall great signs and wonders. And how many of you know that's what this ministry is about? It's about signs and wonders and miracles. And signs and wonders and miracles is to prove that there is a God in heaven by his signs and wonders and miracles and to make all believers out of, to make believers out of all believers. But how many of you know you better be careful about the sign, the wonder, the miracle? Hmm. You better know who's doing it. And you better try the spirits. The Bible says try the spirits rather than be of God. You gotta put them on trial. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say things that they're gonna be held accountable for. Hallelujah. It's another message. For there shall rise false prices, false prophets, and should show great great signs and wonders in so much that if it was possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Verse 25, Behold, I have told you before. Verse 26, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, I go not forth. Behold, he is in secret chambers, believe it not. Now, all of a sudden, here's a strange thing happening. Jesus does not talk about his return, the rapture, until verse 27. He talks about all these other things, of verse 15, the three and a half year period, down of Christ, and all this and that, and so forth. And he says, uh, uh, For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Oh, how did Jesus come back? As lightning coming from the east to the west. In a moment, a twinkle or not. Not a blink, a twinkle. So fast. That it's just oh, Nobody has time to, to say, Oh God, please forgive me. It's over. 
He said, verse 28, for wheresoever the carcass is, there shall the eagles be gathered together. What's he talking about? The carcass, the body. Mm -hmm. And he's saying the angels are going to come gather the body, the body of Christ. If we're the body of Christ, he'll gather us together. Talk about the catching away. Now, now everybody say immediately. Immediately. Verse 29 says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. Huh? And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the Son of Man coming, coming in heaven, uh, and, there, and then all the tribes of the earth shall mourn, and they, they shall see the Son of Man coming. That's a different story. That's that's the great. Uh, th this is uh, at the end of it, the rapture has already taken place, and now this is going to be the great white throne judgment. When they did, when the uh, the, the whole earth's got to give up. All, all, all the people is in hell or wherever are going to stand before. They're going to see him coming. Yeah. And uh, verse uh, 31 says that he shall send his angels with a great sign of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, one from 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 one end of the earth to the other. So it's going to happen. Verse 32, now learn a parable. We read this. Uh, when his branches get ten and put forth leaves, you know the summer's nice. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, uh, uh, know that it's near even at your doors. So where are we at? Where are we at? We, we see everything gets set up right now for the Antichrist to take over. We see the UN, the United Nations, the New World Order. We, we see the New Age. We see, see all this kind of stuff where the whole world is fastening their eyes and they're all saying... And the Muslims love Obama. God spoke to me uh, the day he came out to the platform. He was inaugurated as president. The Lord said, if I allow him to live. Now, don't some of you people out there get wacko because that means God has all our lives in control. Our life is in the hand of God. He said, if I allow you to live, and so forth. He said, but if I allow him to live, he said, he will have more power after he's president than he is when he was as president because he's going to be the leader of the new world order. Now that every 86% of all the nations wants him as their leader. So uh, he, he's, going to, he's going to step forth and he's going to help usher in the Antichrist. And he doesn't say he's the Antichrist. He's going to help usher him in. He's going to set this thing up. So uh, we, we see this thing happening. So, so when the Antichrist appears on the scene, this whole world is going to be in such a total chaos, but we're going to have the United Nations. And all the nations is going to turn and say, yes, you can be our Messiah, you can be our leader, you can be our Jesus, you can be our king, you can be whatever you want to call yourself. Uh, yes, you have our power, you have authority. And that's when we get over to the book of Ezekiel, which the next time we get together, I want to get over to Ezekiel and Daniel. And name the nations that's going to join together to come destroy Israel. But here's something you've got to remember. They hate Israel, but they hate you too because you've been grafted in. You're a Christian. And you are in their way too. And in case some of you don't realize it, I was back in the hippie days. And in the hippie days, we're the ones that started the peace sign. And what the peace sign is, for you that don't know it, that circle represented the earth. And we had a cross in the middle of that circle representing the earth. And we said, Jesus, peace on earth. Through the cross, through Jesus, we have peace. But we hippies got so aggravated, the atheists, the ones that did not believe in it, we took the arms on that cross and we broke them down. And we then we turned that cross upside down in the earth and said, we will have peace when there is no more of Jesus, no more cross. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we don't realize sometimes what's going on. So th there's an undermining going on in this whole world and so forth. Things are really being and set up, and, and it's uh, ex moving exceedingly fast towards that day and hour. But, remember this, our God has already said how it's going to happen and when it's going to happen, and he even tells us how long the Antichrist is going to reign. It's going to be seven years. And then, as we get into the seventh seal, it'll even give you the days and so forth. But somebody says, now wait a minute. I thought nobody knew the day are. Paul says, even a time and season is not for you to know. Nobody knows the day of the hour. Jesus said, nobody knows the day of the hour. No, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. 
you Jesus only people, what about that? <laughs> but anyways, he said, uh, nobody knows the day of the hour, but we will know that it's getting close. But let's, let's go to the day and hour. What time is it right here? According to that clock right there on the wall, it's, it's about 25 to 9 in the evening. But in Israel, it's not that time. In Russia, it's not that time. In other parts of the world, it's not that time. Mm -hmm. And it's not the same day. So people can't say, well, he's coming back on Tuesday at, at 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. There's no way to, everybody will be able to say, okay, he's coming back at such a day at such a time. We don't know. And we don't really know the exact moment and the time that that, time, that clock starts to tick when the Antichrist comes into the scene. But Jesus said, when all these comes to pass, know that it's near, even at the doors. Mm -hmm. Somebody say amen. Amen. I hope somebody got a little bit of something out of this here. Mm -hmm. And let me finish a couple of verses here in verse uh, 24. Uh, verse 36, But of that day and hour no, no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Come on, Jesus, the only people. Come on. Come on. Use some common sense. Amen. I know you love Jesus, and I know you've got Holy Ghost and so forth, but come on, my Lord God, just, just have some common sense here. Amen. I'll read it for you one more time in case you never read it. <clears throat> he says, verse 36, But of that day and hour, no, no, not, no, no man, no, not the angels of, of heaven, but my Father. Oh, now wait a minute. Jesus called him Father. Mm -hmm. How can you call him Father? If you are the Father. When Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, He prayed unto the Father. And He said these words, Not my will, but thy will be done. Mm -hmm. Well, who was He praying to? Was He praying to Himself? Come on. You, use some common sense here. Then, then, then uh, when Jesus was baptized, He come up out of the water, and He heard a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. And the Spirit of God, the third person, the Holy Ghost, came out of heaven as a dove and led upon him. Now, wait a minute. Come on now. Come on, people. Some of you people, you're so caught in. You, you, I, I told them, I tell people this all the time, I told the Muslim people you know, yesterday, I said, you know, you say you're a Muslim. Yeah, I am. I said, but you know what? If you was born in China or someplace, you know what you'd be? You'd be a Hindu. He said, well, you're American, you're a Christian. I said, whoa, 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 buddy. Uh-uh. I said, I was born American, but I wasn't a Christian. Mm -hmm. I did not believe it. I would not accept it. I said, the only way I become a Christian is it had to be proven to me. I said, but you're a Muslim because you don't have no proof. And you believe something somebody tells you. There's a lot of you people out there the same way, too. Oh, I don't know if I like Brother Humphrey. I just don't know. It's just the way he talks. gets out of my skin. I just... There's just something about him. You know, I could just hear you out there, you know. <laughs> See, it's that kind of stuff I don't like about him. He, he mocks me. No, I'm not mocking you. If you feel like being mocked, if the shoe fits, wear it. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Mm. And by the way, we need some M O N E Y. Whoa! I can't believe you said that. Yep, I said that. We'd like to have some offers to keep this ministry going and the Word of God going. Well, I ain't giving nothing to you. That's good. I don't want you to give nothing to me. Give it to the Lord. But if the Lord don't tell you to give it, don't give it. But if God tells you to give it, give it. I'm not begging. I'm pleading with you. God supply all our needs. And that's all there is to that. So I say amen. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody say, Brother Humper, you're getting yourself in a hot, lot of hot water. Well, that's nothing new. He says, verse uh, 37, But as the days of Noah were, now here we are coming to the modern times here. This is the way it is today. But as the days of Noah were, so shall the common son of man be. For as the days that were before the flood, they were, what? Eating, drinking, marrying, giving and marrying, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So should the common son of man be. He said they're going to be out there eating, drinking, marrying. They're just going to be living their life. They're just going to be whatever. Blood came took them away. Jesus is going to come. Bang. And take us away. Next verse says down here. Uh, he said verse 40. 
Then shall two be in the field, then one should be taken, the other left. Two women should be grinding at the mill, then one should be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you know what hour the Lord does come. Now here we go. But know this, that if the good man, the husband or the owner or whoever, of the house had known in what watch or hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have uh, suffered or permitted his house to be broken up or broken into. Therefore be ye also ready for such an hour as you think not that some man comes. How many of you know, we, it might not be in the so-called rapture. God might require our very life tonight. That my, Jesus tells a story about the man said, Today I'm going to go to the city, and I'm going to sell and buy, and I'm going to gain, and then I'm going to sit back, and I'm going to take it easy, because I'm going to have much stored up. And he said, You fool. Yeah. You ought to say, If the Lord will, I'll do this and that. But you rejoice in your boat, and he says, For not a part of your very life. So we don't know. So our moment might come a lot sooner than what we think. Just because you're a teenager, I just heard the other day about some young fellow, I think he's some kind of movie star, I think he's homosexual or whatever, so what, 20 couple years old, died of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. But how many of you know his number is up? And I pray to God that as a homosexual that he did repent and make it right. But we don't know. And I never upset a lot of people. I can tell you this, through the word of God, if he died in that sin, he will not go to heaven because it's an abomination to the Lord. It doesn't matter what you say to Obama, President Obama, or any of you senators or whoever you might be, or all you lesbians or homosexuals. It doesn't matter what you all say. Mm -hmm. It's what the Bible says. Right. Somebody say amen to that too. Amen. Amen. He said, therefore, be... be Therefore, verse 44, be ye also ready for such hours do you think not that some man comes. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Now listen, blessed is that servant whom his Lord when he comes find doing so. In other words, he's saying you better be faithful. You better be doing what you're supposed to be doing when I come. And then he says something else. Uh, Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over his goods, the goods of heaven. In verse 38, there's a special word there. Everybody say what that first word is in, in uh, verse uh, 48. What's that first word? Everybody say, but. 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 but if that evil servant, what kind of servant? Evil. Servant should say in his heart, my Lord delays his coming. He knows I got time. And begin to smite, fight his fellow servants and other people. And to eat and drink with the drunkards, well, there's nothing matter of going out to the bar or, or uh, the tavern. There's nothing matter of going to, uh, uh, what's that one, uh, 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 all the preachers love going there and have a pizza and so forth. Pizza, pizza Hut. Hut and all these other places. And we have a bar right up here along the road. Uh, it used to be called Locust Inn, but now it's another bar room right along the creek up here. And all the preachers and all the Christians, as soon as they're done in church, they all go up there and they have themselves a meal and they have their, their drinks, a casual drink and so forth, you know. Jesus said, but if you eat and drink with these drunkards. He said, uh, uh, but if I evil serve, verse 38, you say, it's hard my Lord, your days to come again to smite, fight with. Fellow servants, and eat and drink with the drunkards. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, in an hour that he's not aware of, and shall cut him his portion uh, with the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, how many of you know that that's not one saved, always saved? Somebody say amen to that. And the Word of God is very strict, and if for everybody that wants to do a study, uh, read chapter 25, and Jesus gives three parables, three examples. Of what the kingdom of heaven is going to be like, and he talks about the the, uh, the talents and the, and the uh, virgins and people that don't feed the hungry and thus and thus and so, forth. and the, all those that does not do their part ends up going to hell. So uh, I just want to say to everybody, and I'm going to try to be as nice as I can be, but I'm going to be as serious and blunt as I can be. I'm not here for, for your friendship. I'd like for you to be my friend. But I don't want to be your friend. And because a lot of times friends will try to make you feel good, even though you're wrong. 
And I'm not going to be a so-called friend to make you feel good when you're wrong. I'm not here for your vote. I'm not here running for office. I'm not here for your money. I'm nothing but a minister, God's mailman. If it upsets you, and I've had many of you ministers say to me, and people say to me, uh, well, it upsets my people. People say, it upsets me. Good. Good. If it upsets you, then that means you need to get right with God. One woman, she said to her pastor, and the pastor called me on the phone after the service. He said, one of my members come to me, and she said, after hearing Brother Humphrey preach, I don't know whether I'm saved or not. And I said, what did you tell her? I said, you better tell her if she don't know she's saved, she's not. How many of you know you'll know whether you're saved or not? You'll know whether you're serious or not. Somebody say amen. So a lot of you people out there, you're playing games with God. That means you're lukewarm. You're playing games. You're, he's not your Lord. He's not your God. He's not number one. You, your house, your family, your sports, your whatever it might be, is your God. And he that you serve, you belong. And I'm telling you right now, that means you're lukewarm. And according to God's word, not my word, but God's word, you're going to split hell wide open. He said, I'd rather have you hot or cold. He said, Revelation chapter 3, the last century, he says, I know thy works, that thou art neither hot nor cold. He said, I'd rather be hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, he said, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. The word spew means to reject from the stomach. He said, you make me sick. Now, you say Jesus is love. He is love. He done all he could. He gave a greater love than he gave for his for us, he died on the cross and rose again so we can be in heaven. But if we do, like the Bible says, like Jesus said, but if that evil servant should say, depart my Lord, delay to come, and you begin to hang around and smite uh, other people and, and drink with, and eat and drink with the drunkards, if you hang with that crowd, you're going with that crowd. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, now, Brother Humber, I don't like to hear it, neither do I. I wish to God that Charles Stanley and all you eternal salvation people was right. And all you people I've witnessed to through all the world and so forth, Say, well, I know he's love, and because he's love, I'm going to heaven. I wish he was right, but that's not true. And uh, we're saved through grace and faith in what Jesus has done, not through works, lest anybody can boast. Our works is like a filthy rag, meaning a woman's menstrual cloth, so we can't go to heaven because of what we've done, but we, we can go to heaven because of the love of God through his son, Jesus Christ. But we've got to obey him. The Bible says, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's a direct order. I have a military man here that wasn't only in the the Army, but he was in the Marine Corps. How many years was it, brother? With the reserve, six. How many? Six. Six years. And like myself, as an old military man, I had a commanding officer. When he gave me a command, it was not a soldier. If you'd like to do this, if it doesn't bother you, or if I don't get in your way, would you know it's a direct order? And Jesus said, If you don't love me, you won't keep my sayings, you will not keep my commandments. And first, the great commandment. He said, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second is likewise unto you, to love thy neighbor as thyself. So and Jesus said, how can you say you love God if you don't care, if you don't love somebody? He said, you're a liar and the truth ain't in it. This word is strict. It's cut. The Bible says, straight is a, is straight and narrow is the gate that leads to life, and few be that find it. For broad and wide is the gate that leads to uh, destruction, and many will go therein. So it's not easy getting there. So Paul said, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. I finished my course. I said, before, the hardest thing I've ever done all my life, I'm 72, almost 72 now, uh, the hardest thing I've ever done in my life was becoming a so-called Christian. Somebody says, are you a Christian? No, I'm not. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Christian. What are you, what are you talking about? I thought you were a preacher, a prophet, an evangelist. Yes, I am that. But a Christian means Christ-like, like Christ. I haven't got there yet, but I'm doing the best I can. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. And I have to do what Apostle Paul said. I crucify myself daily. I have to kill this little fleshly man. Mm -hmm. Because the flesh is no good. Mm -hmm. Paul said, the wretched man that I am, who should deliver me from the corruption of this flesh? These things I should do, I don't. These things I don't, I should. I know the world is a good thing in me. That is in the flesh. So, so it's not easy being a Christian. This is why I see the Word of God. He said, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. I finished my course. And some of you people out there think you're going to float into heaven. You're not floating in. You know, I wish to God. And I, I can come to all your churches and preach you a message and make you shout and dance and all this kind of stuff and, and tickle your ears like Jesus said in the last days. The people will heap themselves preachers to tickle their ears and they'll turn their ears and be tickled. And they'll heap themselves preachers and give them fables and all these kind of things they want to hear. I, I can do that. But your blood would quarrel with my hands. 
And God said, if you warn them not, he said, I'll pray the blood on your hands. But if you warn them, he said, I will not require the blood. I don't want your blood on my hands. Uh, one of the worst things there is for me is to see somebody die, and it really chokes me up. And uh, I don't want to get into all that. But uh, I love you. I, I love you. And true love will tell you straight. And the Bible says that if you're a son, meaning a son or daughter, he said, God chastens those. That means he punishes, whips us, corrects us. He said, he chastens those that he loves. He said, but if you're without chastening, he said, you're not a son or a daughter. He said, you're a bastard. That means one without a father. And he said, no chasing for the present time is pleasant. So nobody likes to get whipped on or corrected and so forth. But he says, afterwards, it yields the fruit of righteousness. So stick with the word of God. If you're in a church where all you hear is love, and that's all, basically all we have around here is all they talk about, love, 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 and people come into church sick and in sin and anything, and they walk in and they hear that message, and there's no convicting power of God there, and they walk out the same way, and those pastors, evangelists, and so forth, is going to pay for it. And uh, But uh, I, I don't want to be mean, and I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to be sincere with you. And uh, we're just uh, people that love Jesus. If you get a chance, you want to come to York, Pennsylvania. We have a what's called the Upper Room Ministry. And uh, you could, Sister Joan will have it on the, the screen and so forth for you. And, and we also have a Bible study here in York, Pennsylvania, too. And uh, Tuesday night and Sunday uh, evenings, which we're going to Sunday morning pretty soon, Lord willing. So we welcome you to come. But uh, we will love you. And we will hug on you and so forth. But as brothers and sisters that love Jesus, we will love you and tell you if you're right or you're wrong. And uh, so we're not here to condemn you. We're here to raise up a supernatural honor for the glory of God. Somebody just raise your hands and wave at me. Somebody say, Hallelujah, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And uh, we're going to we're going to close the televised part of this here, and then we're going to go into the congregation here, and we're going to be uh, asking questions and answers and thus and thus and so forth. And some of you out there, you might have some questions and answers, and uh, you can get a hold of the ministry, and you can call Sister Joan, uh, and she'll get a hold of me. I don't usually give my own personal telephone number out because uh, I'm very busy and thus and thus, but uh, we've got to screen some of the callings and so forth and thus and thus. And, but we love you, and uh, so may God bless you and keep you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Sister Teresa, we stretch our hands out to you, girl, in Jesus' name. Let the healing power of Jesus Christ flow across you. And everybody that's sick out there, whether you're watching this on the internet or television or radio or you know, however, whatever, Jesus Christ loves you so much that he gave his life for you. He was bruised for you. And if you chest time, your peace was up on <coughs> And with your stripes, you are healed. And if you are, you was, and you is, so it's done. So just raise your hands and just say, thank you, Lord, for my healing. It doesn't matter how you feel. Just say it. And by faith, you're healed, and you, you will see the results. He loves you so much. And so just to continue on, in Jesus' name, we love you. May God bless you. Give us a call. Let us know that you've heard this or watched this or whatever. And we just love you. And also, once more, if you want to send an offering, please do. If you don't, that's between you and God. Somebody say amen. God bless you. Amen. amen.